Hi, I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of different uh, calculations associated with an RL series AC circuit. So I'm going to hook up a uh, power supply to a resistor and an inductor in series. It actually doesn't matter which, uh, which order we do this. Um, and we should, if we know all about the individual properties of each of these circuit elements, we should be able to predict the current in this circuit. We should also be able to uh, determine the voltage across each of uh, these individual circuit elements. And we can also calculate the power of each of them. Okay, so let's give, uh, give some numbers here. We're going to go with European voltage. So the RMS voltage will be 220 volts. And the frequency will be 50 hertz. Okay, the resistor has a resistance of 170 ohms and the inductor has an inductance of 300 millihenries. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is calculate the inductive reactance. So it's a way where we can treat the inductor like it's a resistor and uh, make this an analysis simple. So inductive reactance has a formula. It's just angular frequency of the power supply times the inductance of the inductor. It's actually an interaction between the inductor and, um, and the power supply. It's not, a, not truly a property of the inductor because of this number here. Okay, so angular frequency would just be two pi times the frequency and the inductance, converting that to SI units would be of Henry's would be 0.3. And so I throw that into my calculator and it spits out an answer of 94.2 ohms. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, I want to. I have this resistor and inductor in series, but I can't treat the inductor just like a resistor. I can't add 94.2 to 170. That's not how it works. So if we're going to add these two together, we have to add them up in a special way. Um, there's a variety of approaches to this, but I'm just going to go to giving you the formula for this special case. So we're going to calculate what's called, instead of equivalent resistance, we're going to calculate impedance. So this is a, a thing that we calculate for combinations of circuit elements in the AC circuit. So think of impedance as kind of taking the place of uh, equivalent resistance if you had a DC circuit and a complex network of uh, resistors. So uh, the impedance for this particular circuit, this is not a general purpose formula, would be square root of R squared plus the uh, plus the inductive reactant squared. And so I can, uh, I just need to throw numbers into this. So square root of the resistance, which is 170, square that, plus the inductive reactance, which I just calculated to be 94.2. And I throw that into my calculator and I get 194 ohms. So that number tells us it's sort of like, not exactly like, but it's sort of like we have a resistor of 194 ohms uh, instead of this pair of circuit elements. Okay, well, what can I do with that? Well, now that I know the collective behavior of these two, I can apply Ohm's law to the uh, to the to uh, to this circuit because I know it's 220 volts. So I have the voltage across the group will be the current of the group times the impedance of the group. And so solve for current. So current will be the voltage, RMS voltage divided by the impedance. So I'm using RMS voltage. I'm going to get RMS current. So uh, 220 volts over uh, the impedance of 194 ohms. Throw that into my calculator and it spits out an answer of 1.13 amps. Okay, so I've got the current through, uh, through. that's actually the current of everything, current of the resistor, current of the inductor, current of the power supply. Okay, now I'm gonna look at these each as individuals. As I said before, I wanted to find the voltage of each. I've got the current of each, it's all 1.13 amps, but get the voltage. Now I'm gonna apply the, apply Ohm's law to each of those individually. So voltage across the resistor, Okay, this is truly Ohm's law, not a formula that looks like Ohm's law, but uh, current through the resistor times the resistance of the resistor. So I take that 1.13, multiply by the resistance of 170 ohms, 
throw that into my calculator and it spits out an answer of 192 volts. Okay, And I can do likewise with the inductor. Voltage across the inductor will be the current through the inductor times the inductive reactance. So a formula that looks a lot like Ohm's law, just replacing R with an X. And I take that 1.13 amperes. Uh, the inductive uh, reactance is 94.2. I throw that into my calculator and it tells me that the voltage across the inductor is 106 volts. Now this might seem kind of weird at first glance because I've got 192 volts across this resistor. I've got 106. That doesn't add up to 220, which is what we'd expect if this is a purely resistive circuit. So uh, the, re the explanation here is that these voltages are out of phase. They're, uh, the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor are peaking at different moments in time. So the instantaneous voltages of each of these has to add up to the instantaneous voltage of, of uh, the power supply um, and thus satisfying Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law. But the RMS voltages or the maximum voltages uh, don't have to don't have to add up, so don't don't let that bother you too much. Okay, uh, last thing is to calculate the power. So let's do the power of the power of the resistor, and this is average power. So um, average power would be RMS voltage times current, or you could use V squared over R or I squared R. Either one would work. And so I get 192 time volts times 1.13 amperes, and I get the power of the resistor is equal to 217 watts. Okay, well what about the inductor? Well the power, average power of the inductor is zero. So what the inductor does is as you increase the current through it, you're cranking up the magnetic field and there's actually energy in that magnetic field. And as the current decreases, then the magnetic field decreases. So it's sort of like a capacitor and then it takes some energy away from the um, from the circuit and then it gives it back. So it's, it, but on average, it's not really uh, sustaining an energy trans, uh, transformation one direction or, or the other, okay? And of course the power, this energy, uh, the sustained transfer, transformation of energy for the resistor comes from the power supply. So, so its power would be 217 watts as well. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for, thanks for watching.